Hello, you're welcome to Finance Gate Programming Wealth. And in this um, particular session, we're going to be taking a look at how to really program wealth in such a way that it starts from conception up until um, the manifestation stage where we actually get to create. Now, I also have to emphasize the importance of this and for you to actually get to know that this is not um, something easy if it were everybody will be doing it now it's not easy not because it's difficult but because it has its processes it has its protocols and um, it's, it's got its prices okay there's always a price to pay and so you have to get to the point where you will be able to pay such prices or give such discipline and intentionality you know to what we're talking um, about so finance gate programming wealth that's what, what we're talking about um, about today. Now, you also have to understand that um, we will start with a basic introduction of this. This is not a one-time course or a one-time session. It's something that continues and that's part of the nature of finance and wealth as it is. So, you have to understand certain fundamentals with regards to wealth because I believe that there's a lot of this misconceptions to wealth, especially um, in the society that we have um, today. When we're talking about programming, programming is actually from the subconscious. Okay, now there are different or three compartmentalization of the human mind or soul. So we have the conscious mind, we have the unconscious mind, and we have the subconscious mind. Okay, so the conscious mind is the, the part of your soul that engages with a voluntary action. So things you want to do. You want to stand up, you want to sit down. These are voluntary actions. So these are conscious actions. We have the unconscious things. Okay, so these are kind of like reflexes. You, you're not really aware um, it's happening. But the powerful thing is the subconscious. These are the things that most times out of your control, but they have the power that controls, you know, the eventuality of your life. So during that session, we will be touching on some of these things now it's important for us to understand what the illustration of wealth is this gives us good perception you know um into what we're really going into so there are three important parts with a, a lot more but three that i'll be choosing to to illustrate for this um, session so we have seeds okay we also have um, stars and we have um, fetus okay now these three things there are similarities as well as differences but one of the all of these three things will help you understand um, the concept of wealth with regards to what we're taking a look at in this particular course so let's start off with seeds now seeds in itself are a coding they are instructions they are programs okay the moment you plant the seeds in the ground everything goes to work now you also have to understand that no matter how viable a seed is there's the ground in which it is working must also be at a particular standard so if you have a very good seed with a poor ground you're not really going to get best from it if you have a bad seed with a good ground you're still not going to get anything okay or anything useful okay so while the seed is important the ground is also important so there's a point of balance you must get to in order to make sure that you've got good seeds and also you've got good grounds now the second thing is a star now a star is a life a heavenly life force on itself it's able to use pressure gases compressed with gravity of course and then there's a fusion or a fission as the case may be and then there's bursting forth of energy now this energy sustains this star over a long period of time and that's how wealth is now you also need to understand that just like a seed grows into a plant the same thing with stars stars have different faces at the moment where all of the energy of a star is used up it becomes a, a brown dwarf or a black dwarf and it dies even though it might take billions of years for that to happen 
the same thing happens with wealth. Wealth can grow and wealth can die. Okay, so you have to understand the process of keeping or sustaining um, this wealth. And we also have a fetus, which is that baby that is growing in the womb of the mother. Now, the baby doesn't know what is happening externally. It is all the mother feeds the baby that determines how well, how developed, how mature the fetus becomes. The same thing happens with wells. Now, the content of your soul is very important. And that is what feeds your mind. That is what feeds your subconscious and then um, lets you know the quality of life you're going to live and the kind of things that you attract. Okay, So we talked about... Um, seeds and soils we talked about stars and their life cycle and then we talk about fetus and the need for nourishment now when you put all of these things together it it gives you um uh, a skeletal form of what wealth programming is but when we're talking about wealth a couple of things you need to know quickly wealth is a code of access okay if it's like a door right and you you need a key to open the door wealth is that key so wealth is not just money wealth is relationship wealth is capital wealth is health okay wealth is skill anything that you can use to open doors into bigger better experiences that is a, a, a key to wealth okay and so you must know how to use this we're going to be talking about this in in other sessions as well um it is also a system or structure of life okay how wealthy you are will determine the quality of life you're going to leave the quality of network you're going to have the quality of your association you know and all of that now wealth is also um value in good measure okay it has weight just like a star has gravitational pull okay wealth is able to pull in the right things to you once you know how to initiate that okay um it is also able to influence its environment that's what wealth does just like a star okay and even the baby so some things um that happens to the fetus the mother also feels the effect of these things okay maybe in her health in her appetite or cravings whatever okay so Wealth can cause intended actions. What that means is that you all, you have more control over certain things. Okay, the wealthier you are, the less unforeseen circumstances you are able to to, to mitigate. Okay, the poorer poorer you are, the, the more circumstances that you don't have um, control over. Okay, so wealth is a construction of the state of your soul. So your soul is very important. In, in talking about wealth. We're going to be talking about the soul sometimes very soon, but not in this particular session. So let's talk about briefly, we will be taking each of these things one by one, but for now, just have the basic understanding of it. So these are the 12 foundation pillars for creating anything, whether it's wealth, success, whatever it is, okay? So everything starts with a thought. What you need to understand is that is thought is a string of impressions in your mind okay a thought is the basic energy of ideation or reality everything starts with a thought you make sense because you think the moment that your capacity of thought is hampered with or tampered with then the quality of your life begins to reduce drastically and that's what education actually does to you education improves the quality of your thought and so improves the quality of your life, perception, relationship, and every um, other thing. So everything starts with the thought. Okay, if you have read this book, Think and Grow Rich, it actually epitomizes that um, to you. Now, the second thing you need to understand is imagination. Imagination is not thought. Okay, but imagination is what you have when an idea fuses with a thought and so by reason of that an image a picture a sense is formed and this sense has meaning and purpose imagination is when a thought becomes an idea 
and that idea has a meaning and a purpose this is very important okay and imagination will not be, i don't want to get ahead of, of myself so imagination has meaning and purpose now the next thing is memory memory is very key okay memory is what happens when you own that thought and then that thought becomes an experience that is fused with your soul through memory so everything that is a memory to you is something you've experienced either directly or indirectly so these are actually thoughts realities relationships content you know that have had access into your mind and so it it allows you to define or relate to the world in a particular way okay so the memories you have have a long way on the psychological effects you know that you have the quality of your mind or the state of your mind now visualization is using that memory to see and to bring up images and ideas so if, um, visualization is more like a um, secondary form of thought okay now these are thoughts that aren't self-generated okay so visualization is self-inspired based on your memory based on your imagination based on your thoughts how you are able to define and make sense of the things is visualization and which is very key in creating you know um anything for that matter so the next thing or the next step is faith um, I have a certain audio on faith that really breaks it down and helps you to understand what faith is. What a lot of people practice is hope and not faith. So if you need that audio, um, you, can, you can also um, request for it. Now, faith is the substance of visualization. You can't have faith without visualization. Okay? Now, faith is when that visualization becomes felt, becomes sensed, and then you believe in the possibility of it through an anchor. So that anchor could be a promise or a, a vision or a sighting or an image. Something that you believe has happened is faith, even though you've not seen the tangible manifestation of it. But there is a token, you know, of faith. Faith is a product of visualization. You have to visualize something for your faith um, to be strong. So, um, after faith, then, is emotions. It is a wrong pattern to have emotions before faith. It is after faith that you have emotion. Now, because emotion is a soulish response to faith or belief. Emotion is a, a, a final product. So, emotion is not a starter. Emotion is a, in a, is a finished product. Okay? So, you actually clothe faith in emotions. Now, when you clothe faith in emotions, it does something powerful to that faith. It allows that faith to pass through the soul on its way to manifestation. You actually need emotions for things to be manifested, for things to manifest. Without emotion, manifestation becomes more difficult. Okay, But we're going to talk extensively about um, all of these things and there will be probably guided meditation you know along this path as well so after you have emotion which is a finished product then you start another process all again which is the crystallized idea now the crystallized idea takes inspiration from faith okay so these are instructions these are inspirations okay that you get by reason of faith now this is a well thought out process so when you have a when you have faith a crystallized idea is now the idea that is born from that faith not from anything external but from that is where people's faith fail the moment you begin to borrow inspiration from external external factors you are hurting your faith but the crystallized idea is after you've had the faith which is now wrapped up in emotion 
you use that faith while stopping and this emotions to generate ideas this is like the stars the fusion that happens within the stars that now generates heat and life for it okay so this is a powerful face which a lot of people um don't really get to okay so you, all of these things still happen in your mind now the point here you actually begin to speak or talk to yourself after a process of meditation after you've engaged faith every time you speak without engage, already engaging faith you are you're reducing your chances of manifestation okay so that's why the faster you are to talk the more foolish you seem okay but the slower you are to speak the wiser you are why is this because when you speak in faith you speak in the substance that has been formed in the emotion that you've wrapped around that faith you tell yourself so your physical ears must hear what has been going on in your mind and that is one of the first steps to the physical tangible manifestation of the realities so after you've spoken to yourself this is where mental work now has to start okay so this is when you set you, you strategize this is when you set a goal this is when you go through the mental process and this is why the state of your mind is important you can limit how much you are able to do based on your exposure mixed based on your experience and your level of knowledge okay so this is where research is important development is important and good sense of strategy and goal setting okay so when you already set that goal when you already set that strategy that this is what will help you manifest that reality then you start building the prototype so what are the steps so these are the tactical parts of it okay so um how do you bring physical materials to create that idea or that goal what are the things you will need on earth that would help you so it maybe is further your education but there's a certain relationship these are the things that you now need to have in order to improve your chances of bringing into a materiality that which your faith has already birthed okay this is very important so this is where you now begin to put physical things together in order to actually create the things you have already seen in your heart okay so once that has been put in place then allow process and principles to take effect so it's now like you're planting the seeds into the ground and then allow the ground to do the work so okay so when you bring the physical things and the prototype into the environment then allow the environment to now begin to do do its thing okay so sometimes you just have to give in things to timing to process to principles and that's why your understanding of laws are very important and principles okay very important in this it is when the is that's why it's called the process of time and the fullness of time it is when time has had its course and process has had its course that is when manifestation occurs okay so manifestation is that mirror idea into physical reality or physical experiences now the thing about faith and manifestation is sometimes the idea is so grand that it takes a lot of time for the manifestation and a lot of processes so if manifestation doesn't happen in your lifetime what you have to do is to pass on the process of this manifestation into the children and the next descendants via education and practices okay this is very important now how things manifest is from the unseen then it becomes to the intangible then it becomes the seen and then the tangible okay so the things you can touch and feel and all okay so this is the basic skeletal understanding okay so the next sessions now will begin to pick on these things one by one and then demystify it